Welcome to Virtualize Everything, where we strive to educate and inform the viewer about technology and technology-related topics around virtualization. Tonight, as I was setting up our new R710 for use, I realized that some of the tutorials that we have done in the past may not be completely relevant. When we found the feature for the web interface, we had already updated our container repository for images, and we don't really cover that. So tonight's video is going to be one that we haven't done for a while. It's going to be Linux containers in Proxmox 7 from start to finish. Let's look at the two ways of gathering an image. Then we're going to deploy an image on our system. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to need to do is switch over to our shell. We can do that by clicking on shell up in the top right hand corner. Once that's happened, we'll get a window that looks something like this. And inside of that window, we can interact with our Proxmox server just as though we were using a command line interface on its terminal itself. So we're going to want to enter a command to update our repositories. Let's show you what it looks like beforehand, actually. Switching back to our web interface and going over to our local drive and selecting CT templates, we can click on templates. And we do see some templates. But if you notice, some of them are fairly out to date and we don't have any of our turnkey templates or anything else that we've talked about in the past. So let's go back to that shell interface and update it. So the command to update our repositories for our container templates is going to be PVEAM update. All right, so with that run, we can go back to our web interface and let's just refresh. I don't know if you need to, but let's do it. And then we look at templates and you'll see that we have many more templates, including all of our turnkey templates. And you're going to see more up to date versions of the templates as well, including the mail gateway and other things. So now let's look at the first way of getting our template. And that's simply to use this window, select a template like this Ubuntu 21.10 standard and press download. Now with that, we can see that we have an Ubuntu template to work with. The second way to do this is going to be the older way, which is to use the terminal. So we're going to go ahead and enter the command PV EAM available. That's going to show us a printout of all the available templates, similar to the one that you saw in the web interface. Then we're going to enter the command pveam download local or your storage location, whatever it's going to be. Then we're going to pick our template. This time select Debian 11 standard. Select the whole name. Copy it and then go ahead and paste it here at the end. Then we can press enter and it downloads our template. Now switching back to our web interface and refreshing, we see that we have the template downloaded that we can work with. So let's make a container. To make the container, the first thing we need to do is select the server, then we're going to go up here to create CT and this is going to bring us up a setup wizard. So you select your node. If you're a single node non-cluster, just the node, the CT ID number and the host name, set up a password, select next, select the storage location, which in our case is local, the default, and select the template you want to use. Select your disk. Again, in our case, it's default, and we're going to use the 8 gig size. 
CPU number, one is fine for us. Select the memory, 512 is fine for us. You may want to change the CPU count and the memory depending on what you're doing. Select the network configuration. We're going to choose DHCP, but if we were to use static, we would enter an IP address that looks something like this, but notice that box stays red. We need to add the CIDR notation at the end of it for our subnet mass. So in most people's cases, and if you don't know what CIDR notation is, you're going to use slash 24. And then, of course, enter your gateway as you wish. Your DNS settings, you can use the same as hosts, or you can configure a DNS server for the container. Now, my server uses 1.1.1.1 as its DNS, but I want to use my Pi-hole server. So I'm actually going to go in here and configure it to the IP address of my Pi-hole server. Now, this is the last chance to kind of check any settings. We can also check a box here of start after creating, and that'll start up the container. Hit finish, and our system's gonna go ahead and make the container. All right, so our container has been created, and it is started. So with that, we could go log in at the console, which we're going to do in a minute. But let's look at a few other things that we could do. They won't take effect immediately because we started the container. And we really shouldn't have selected that box if we wanted to actually choose these options. I don't plan on implementing these options on this container, but I do want to show you how to change them in case you wanted to do anything with this container that may require something like running Docker or running an NFS share, things like that. You need to know how to change them. We can go in here and go to options and then change many different things. So the one we want to look at is this features. We'll select it, hit edit, and then if we were going to run Docker, we would need both nesting and TCTL checked. You can also configure NFS or Samba. Of course, privilege container has to be set as well for them, but that's how you would change that to set up Docker. Unprivileged container, which would need to have been configured here in the wizard when you set it up right here. And your start on boot right here. So if you want this container to fire up when your server restarts for whatever reason, you'd select start on boot, hit edit, check this box, and click OK. You can also configure network settings by hitting here and going to edit. And this is where we could change it to static if we so wished or whatever else. Change our bridge, select a VLAN if they were set up, that type of thing. DNS if you would like to configure it. And you can change your host name here. So if I no longer wanted to call this container Ubuntu 21.2, 10, I could call it something else, like Ubuntu 21.10 VE. Hit OK, and you'll notice it changes over here as well. Go in here, and we could configure backups. Click Backup Now, which would back up this container. Firewall settings can be configured here if you wish and you can configure some permissions for the container as well here. All right, so with that, we're done really setting up a container, but let's just take a look at the container running. To do that, we're going to go here and click on console, and the container is going to start. So now your container's running. You can log into it for the first time using the username root and the password you set up in that configuration utility. You would have entered it right here and then confirmed it right here. And you've logged in. 
Now you can begin working with this container doing whatever you want. The first thing we usually do is to update the repositories and install any needed software updates. Of course, the command to do that, you probably already know. I'm just going to go ahead and enter it. apt update and and apt. Let's do a full grade. And then we're going to enter dash y. So we hit yes. All right. So let's go ahead and actually create another user and disable that root user. We do this for security reasons. You don't really want a user being root in something that's deployed. So to do that, we're going to use the command add user. Now, in my experience, this command works in Ubuntu and Debian. So add user and then the username. In our case, we're going to enter VE. Give it a password. Confirm the password. And we've created a user. Now to give that user sudo permission, we're going to enter add user VE sudo and give it sudo permission. Now let's turn off password access to the root user. This will secure the root user and stop it from being able to be logged in too. So we'll use su and we'll go to the ve user and then we can type in sudo passwd passwd dash l and root. Enter our ve password for sudo and there you go. So we can exit. And let's go ahead and exit again. So now we're back at the login screen, just like we were before. And we can try root again to confirm. But we'll note this time we get an incorrect login. There you go. So the container's set up and ready to be used for our project. Let's go ahead, exit this. And now that we're at our web interface, I'm going to stop this. You probably should have shut it down from the command line using the shutdown command. If you were in that VE user, you would have typed in sudo shutdown. So now with the container shut down, the last thing I want to show you is how to turn it into a template and then how to clone it so you can use it more times. Over here, we can actually right click on the container Go convert to template, and then we can select yes. This will turn that container into a template container. We can no longer start that container up and use it for things, but we can actually clone it and then link clones to it so that we have numerous different containers that are that container. So you can see here the icons changed. Now, if we right click, we go clone and we give it the new name and we can select a new host name, clone one. And now you see over here in mode, linked clone or full clone. So linked clones actually create faster and they link back to the base template image. Now full clones take longer to clone and longer to create, but they don't link back to that base template image. So what that means is that if we were creating or backing up or moving a linked clone versus a full clone, a linked clone would need the clone template to be on the new system and to be backed up as well in order to work. The linked clone is always going to look back for that template. Now a full clone goes ahead and has everything. It's not dependent on the template, but it inherits all of the template's properties when you create a clone. So 
everything will move over, all your settings will move over, your user accounts and everything. So you can work with that just the same as you worked with your template. It's a fast and easy way of deploying multiple containers in an easy way so that when you're working and testing software or doing whatever project you're doing with your container, you're actually able to quickly move through the process. So now you see that we've created our clone and our template here. But if we went up to summary on our template, we no longer have any options here to start it. But they appear here. So we can start this template and log into it with console, just like we did the first time with the new user, VE and VE's password. And you notice, even if we run an APT update, that everything's up to date because we already updated everything in that container. Now, if we come back to this container in a few days, of course, we're going to need to do updates. There'll be new updates out. But right now, today, all the updates that we did are all ready to go. So with that, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial of getting started with containers, downloading your templates, setting up a container, setting up basic users, and working with clones. I hope that you find it useful, beneficial, and it helps you build on your project and use Proxmox more. Proxmox is great and we love it. So with that, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to help virtualize everything, continue to grow on YouTube, and bring more educational content to YouTube on virtualization. Have a good night.